Jocko, were you very disciplined as a kid? And was there a set day or moment when you saw how important discipline was and decided to do it? Well, as a kid, I think I was, for the most part, a kid. <laughs> I was not some extremely disciplined kid. I was I was pretty stubborn when it came to certain things, which may be some kind of an early immature form of discipline, you know, just being hard headed. But I think as I got older, I saw the first thing I remember along these lines is seeing a lack of discipline around me. I didn't identify it as people having discipline. I saw like a lack of discipline. I saw weakness. I saw drugs. I saw alcohol. I saw laziness. And I, I started to get after it. A little bit, right? A little bit, a little tiny bit. But there was no role models. There was no internet. There was no guidance. I and I didn't have the sense to to go to the library and and find Bob Hoffman's book, How to Be Health, Happy, Healthy, and Strong. Like I didn't know to do. I didn't have the sense to do that. And so we did some basic things. You know what I mean? Some push ups. You know. And, and if, the, the push-up workouts that I did when I was 13 years old are laughable. Mm. Laughable. I mean, I think if I did, you know, a set of 50 push-ups, I was corner, you know, boom, I'm the man, right? No, you are the man, 13, yeah. 50. And, and we did some silly little, like, kind of barbell, dumbbell circuit training kind of thing. Now, I always liked the military. I recognize that as a some kind of a trait of discipline in there and I looked up to military veterans I knew one Marine Corps drill instructor and if you know anything about Marine Corps drill instructors so now we're talking 85 86 87 there wasn't any wars going on but you know when you're a kid you're just like oh he's a Marine Corps drill instructor he fit the part he was the, like just perfect Marine Corps built drill instructor which most Marine Corps drill instructors are pretty damn perfect it's an incredibly incredibly honed job yeah. that's very well choreographed yeah. and very and very structured and it's a it's a very fine um it's real tight, tight it's real tight right, it's yeah. a real tight situation if you're a good Marine Corps drill instructor yeah, yeah. and i knew one Right when I was a kid, and I just looked at him, he was like a god. Right, this guy is a Marine Corps, soldier. and and of course he had, I think he had like a '68 Camaro, so he had a muscle <sighs> car. So you know he was, was just dope. like just the man. And so now, so I got that going on, and then then there was the hardcore bands that I started listening to, and they seemed to have some kind of there was something there. Right, I recognized something there. I recognized something with Black Flag. I recognized something with band called Slapshot. I recognized something with the Crow Mags and I, I saw there was something in there. And I and I I, it, it, I couldn't I can't I didn't know what it was, but it was some kind of strength, right? Mm. Some kind of discipline was in there. I I didn't put it all together though. And there was no sort of unified way to go down this path it didn't I didn't find that and I don't know if I found it if it what it would look like to me you know maybe you could say that that path was the Boy Scouts right the Boy Scouts are a disciplined group of individuals that learn how to hike and hunt and I mean so was that it I don't know I maybe I didn't identify that or I didn't have the right personality because I was kind of nonconformist right a little bit you know a little bit of a rebel so I didn't put it all together. Um, and I had some little flashes of like being hardcore with some of the things I did that would be like, you know, kind of getting after it in some really minor way, some yeah. some some minimalistic level of discipline. Mm. But it wasn't until I started training in earnest to join the Navy that I started to what we could recognize now as getting after it a little mm. bit, you know, it's and again, it's nothing compared to what people do now. Mm. What definitely not, but you know, now we're talking 1989. 
I was running through marshes and being covered in mud and I was swimming in the ocean and I was doing pull-ups and push-ups and dips and sit-ups. And again, it's nothing compared to what I do now or even what everybody does now. But I was doing what I could with what I knew at the time. And I didn't really have any idea of what I or really what people in general were capable of. Like, I just didn't know. I didn't know. I never would have thought a good pull-up workout is 500 to 1,000 pull-ups. I, I, I wouldn't have thought that. You know, for me, I did three sets of pull-ups. And I was kind of the man, you know. <laughs> so, I just I just didn't, didn't know. And... I guess I guess you could say I didn't even have I didn't know to even explore those those outer limits of what I was capable of, you know, which is a bummer. Um now I, also you got to remember I didn't even know another person that did pull-ups. Like there there's, there wasn't like pull-up bars around. There wasn't uh, you know, I'm out in the woods somewhere <laughs> in the woods in New England. There's no pull-ups. People, people aren't like, hey, how many pull-ups can you do? I never heard that question. Oh. And I didn't know anybody that swam in the open ocean. I didn't know anybody that did push-up workouts, right? I don't know. I was just in the sticks. And so when I joined the military, I was a blank slate, really, for all practical purposes. And it was really easy. They say, you do this. This is what you do. And you get advanced. This is what you do to be ready. This is what you do. And I realized very quickly that the harder you worked, that the more disciplined you were, the easier your life was. The easier your job was, the easier your day was, the easier your physical activities would get. And when I got into the teams, and really going through buds, when you're going through buds, and when I finally met guys that were going to buds, and we started doing 100 pull-ups, and we started doing 150 pull-ups, we started doing 200 pull-ups a workout, and then it was like, oh, wow, you can do a lot of stuff. That was getting ready to go to buds, and then you go to buds, and uh, you know you realize that you that people, it's not just this individual like um, spiritual awakening. I'm like, no, you just realize, hey, you can do a lot of pull-ups. People can. It's not that big of a deal. And everybody knows you can find that out on the, you don't need to go to Buds to figure that out. You can figure that out. Just, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And all you need is to have that knowledge. But I continue to realize that being disciplined, all these things, waking up earlier and working hard and training hard and keeping your gear squared away and studying the material that we were supposed to know, I realized that that work, that discipline made life easier and it made us freer made me freer and the more time i spent in the teams the more this came embedded in my head and not only as an individual did i realize this but i realized this very quickly or not very quickly but as soon as i started moving into leadership positions i realized that the more disciplined a squad was or the more disciplined a platoon was the better that squad or that platoon was going to be and that's kind of where the evolution Mm. the evolution of it yeah man it's that whole process that i'm finally i don't want to say finally but right now it's starting to become clear where the whole you know you're gonna pay the price in at some point you're going to pay the price for your actions. So if you're going to prepare, like let's say I'm going to get in shape, Mm -hmm. right? You committing to working out every day, that's you paying a certain price. Like having the discipline to do it. You're going to pay the price. Waking up early is not comfortable. Working out hard every day, it's not comfortable. You're going to pay a little price right there. The next day or the, you know, in regards to the results of that workout, you're not paying the price. You're reaping kind of rewards, right? Or you cannot pay the price early with the workout and stuff. But you still got to, that tab is still outstanding. So when you. Balance w- due. Yeah. So when it comes results time there, that's, that's when you're going to pay your little price there. Your body, your health, whatever. Mm-hmm. At some point you're going to have to pay a price. Pay now or pay later. Yeah, man. So and I vote you, pay now. Pay now, you get way more benefit. Cause like no one remembers. I, well, we do. Some of us do. We. I, I don't remember and take pleasure in remembering the time I skipped that workout because I wasn't feeling like doing it. You know. 
Like that doesn't provide a, a sense of pleasure in my life to think back on those days, you know? Yeah, it's not good. And at the same time, when I think of like the detriment of doing the workout when I didn't feel like it, that doesn't, that's not a bad memory to me, you know? When I do think back of like, and or think even now of like the result of being in better shape than the, you know, the average person or, or going to jujitsu and not gassing or, or whatever, mm-hmm. bringing in all the groceries at one time, <laughs> let's face it, that's something. That is a sense of pleasure that I have the freedom to be able to do that when I when I want, you know. Yeah, and you know what else is interesting about this is sometimes I hear this, um, and you did this a couple times tonight, right? It, people go, "Well, yeah, but you're Jocko," mm-hmm. like like as if I'm as if I'm not a normal person, mm-hmm. but you're I, not. But I, yeah, Continue. but I'm, I'm saying like you know I just kind of went through like this story, and and it's paints a pretty clear picture that I'm a pretty normal person. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's pretty normal. But I made decisions mm-hmm. along the way that maybe weren't normal and that maybe opened the doors to being a little bit not normal. Yeah. But there are choices that you can make. So so I'll, I'll have this with my kids too. Or you know who else? Sometimes I'll have... Um, I would have friends, we'll say... Sure. That would say, you know, well, yeah, you're that's you, you know, like I'd say, no, if you want to win this fight, for instance, mm-hmm. you want to win this fight, man, you got to you got to do this. You got to get after this. You got anyway. Well, you know, it's not that easy. And, mm-hmm. and that's that's what you would do. But you're you're you. And, and that's, you know, it's almost like yeah, it's unachievable. Yeah, right? it doesn't, doesn't apply to and me. I, and and yeah. my kids will say that to me. You know, my kids, and I think it's actually a pretty big detriment that they think that I'm not, that, that, oh, I do it, but, but that's because I'm me and I'm, doesn't, you know, doesn't it's, it's like them, not right? true. It's not yeah. true. And so, you know, occasionally I, I have, I hear people say that and I go, man, this isn't like, I guess it, it's kind of like what we were talking about the other day with, someone saying oh oh that's a good picture you took what kind of camera did you use yeah. well it's kind of like that i'm like you know oh I, I wake up early it doesn't it's not just because you i just gifted, gifted that way yeah 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 exactly. or i i work out a lot oh just because you're super motivated right no, like no, that no, was no, no. gifted to yeah you at some i just point. am born motivated yeah. right no actually i'm a person yep. and i grew up yep. you know, a person yeah and so it, it but it makes it very clear that these are just choices you can make and you can get after it. Totally true. And I would say that it does when I say one. Well, anytime I would say consciously and meaningfully say, well, that's you is if I would be talking about a way of achieving like the same thing. Like you would do it this way. I would try to do it this way kind yeah. of thing. If yeah. I was confident that I could get the, the results, you know, yeah. like whatever that yeah. is. But um, wh- when did I say it today well, about you sleeping? Yeah, you're you, yeah. you can do the four hour sleeping right, thing. Right. Or so more so than you can do the four hour sleep and still function. I meant you're into the four hours, five hours sleep thing. Yeah. Which is cool. But and I and I realize there are some genetic points in there, I believe. Right? Yeah. I believe that there are some genetic points in there. I believe there are some genetic points in, in everything, right? And I've told you this. I have m- one of my daughters who is most similar to me, both physically and mentally, sleeps about the same as I do, if not less. Yeah. One of my other daughters, who is most physically and mentally, well, physically more like my wife, she sleeps a lot. Yeah. And so there's a, gen- and my wife sleeps more than I do. And so there is a genetic component to it, I believe. And I've read articles and people send me Twitter articles all the time. Oh, you're one of these, you know, fast sleepers, the 2% yeah. of the population, all sure. this stuff. And I'm just saying, okay, yeah, that's great. But then people say, oh, well, you just work out every day because you're super motivated. Right. And that's yeah. just good. Or yeah. you just train jujitsu all the time because you're just super motivated. And it's like, okay, right. yeah. Well, you know what? Great. Great. Right. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're absolutely correct and even with the sleeping thing that is like because okay ultimately yeah if you don't have to sleep as much as the next person sure that's an advantage just because you have more time that's it it's not like you know someone would would 
be like hey other than that reason be like hey it's cooler or it's somehow more beneficial for me to yeah. sleep five hours rather than my normal eight like so i mean that put it this way if someone wants to choose to sleep four hours just because you do it that's kind of weird yeah yeah now that being said what's awesome is there are a bunch of people uh, on on the interwebs a bunch of badass troopers that have are are i, I retweet almost all of these because people go hey you know i'm i lost 32 pounds mm-hmm. hey i lost 42 pounds hey i you know did my first squat today with 300 pounds so, so and, and and there's no difference in what they were doing before and what they're doing now yep. fundamentally in their in their genes right. or their or their physiology what they did is they decided to make these decisions yes, they decided that they were going to go out they decided they were going to step up their game they're going to decide they're going to wake up early they decided they were going to clean up their diet they decided they were going to get after it and when they do that all of a sudden boom Results. And you know what? You fast forward like six months, and people go, "Well, you just do that because you're super motivated." And yeah. they'll be yeah. they'll be thinking, "You know what? No, I'm not. I'm yep. I'm a person. Yep. And I choose to get after it. Yep. <laughs> I recommend you all choose to get after it. And I encourage that. And it, you know what? It's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. There's the nagging weakness that is pulling you down. Yep. You gotta shut that thing down. Here's the thing I was talking to my friend Anthony about this yesterday. And I always mention this. Okay, so decision making, right? We're wired, this so environment right now, we're wired to not get after it in our brain. <laughs> we're wired for the short term payoff right now. Mm-hmm. In times of scarcity, you know, I yeah. don't know if I mentioned yeah. that, but you're wired to, you better get it while you can. Food, mate. Rest, Re- everything. You better get it when you, when you, and your body starts to adapt to that environment because it's been going on for so long. So it's like, man, if you're tired, that's your body telling you something. You better get that rest. You see some food, some fat, a lot of calories, um, you know, fat, sugar, a lot of energy. Whatever, you better get that. You better eat it mm-hmm. now. Now, physiologically, you're like that, and yeah. mentally, you're like that. You're wired that way. So, my point: hyperbolic discounting. All that is, is choosing the short-term payoff over the long-term payoff. Oftentimes, when the long-term comes, you regret your short-term payoff decision. Most of the time. Right, yeah. So, it's a spectrum. You know, there's some, some, some things are more or less detrimental. So, discounting is when you choose that short-term payoff. You can tra- trace back all your success and failures to making that short-term payoff decision over the long-term payoff. But here's the thing. Here's my point. It, bro, the odds are kind of... When you say it's it's not easy, this is a fact. It's not easy because you're not... Why? You have to learn. You have to be trained out of discounting, hyperbolic discount. You got to be trained out of it in one way or another, whether it's from, from somebody, from your environment you're in, you know? Mm-hmm. Like if everyone's, if, if everyone's eating healthy around you, it's very unlikely that you're going to be like, Oh, this is how you do it? Okay, I'm going to not do it. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's really unlikely. So you can get trained by that way, by your environment. But the point is you get you have to be trained out of this way of thinking because you're wired for it. And all it is is the short-term payoff versus the long-term payoff. Like I said, you got to pay that price somewhere. You might as well pay the price short-term. Right now. And get the benefits for the long-term, you know, right rather than discount. But we're wired against it, so that's why it's not easy. But it, train yourself out of it, man. You know how you train yourself out of it? Discipline. Get after it. Get after it, yeah. All right. It's true, though. It's absolutely true.